All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. So, my name is uh, Walt Miner. I'm the Senior Director of AGL Community. Um, it's going to explain a little bit about why the quality of this presentation may be a little lousier than my usual standard, which is pretty lousy. So, uh, I've been the community manager for 10 years. Um, I lived in the Chicago area for 27 years. And you can see it was cold there and snowy. And then this is like in March of 2021, I had to dig out my driveway from three inches of ice. So I decided I'm gonna move somewhere where there's no snow and I'm pretty immune to climate change. So I moved to Asheville, North Carolina. And Asheville's great. Um, we've got mountains, we've got the Biltmore, we've got art, we've got concerts, we've got really great restaurants. I really recommend visiting Asheville at some point, but maybe you heard. Um, about a month ago, it was a month ago yesterday, we got hit by a major uh, hurricane, Hurricane Helene. So uh, it's been a very interesting month in Asheville. Um, so my family is fine. I had no damage to my house. Uh, we had no power or cell service for four days. Um, I got water back about a week ago, but you can't drink it. Um, you really can't use it for much. Um, Saturday, I was told my internet came back after a month. Um, and then, just because I was having, you know, I was not enjoying Asheville enough, uh, there was another big hurricane that came called Milton. And my father lives a quarter mile from Tampa Bay. So I went down for Milton, and that was some more fun. But his house was fine. He only lost power for three days. Um, so the long and the short of it is, I've had quite a month. Uh, <laughs> And I've been a little distracted. Um, so if you know the quality of my uh, um, presentation is even lousier than usual, I've explained that. Uh, so Dan, Dan had a few of these slides in his uh, presentation, but I'm going to basically give you a, kind of an update of what we've been doing on AGL and how you can participate. But in case you didn't know what we do in advance, we're a nonprofit. Pro, uh, project hosted by the Linux Foundation. Um, we're collaborating to build the car of the future through rapid innovation. Um, and really, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got software that basically you can, you can develop for any, any one of these use cases except, except ADAS. We're really kind of not really focusing on ADAS at this point. And as Dan said, we have a nine total OEMs supporting AGL. Overall, we have over 100 different members, including tier one suppliers, these, these OEMs, but tier one suppliers like Panasonic, Continental, uh, Denso, Aishin, uh, all, the, all the major tier ones, both in Japan and in, as well as in Europe. And we've been shipping, to, we've been shipping within vehicles in Toyota, uh, Toyotas for the last uh, five or six years now. We're in, we're in most of the Toyota fleet. Um, Subaru Legacy, some Subarus. Uh, Toyota's also migrated into their Lexuses. And as I'll show you, as the way we're using Flutter, a lot of that code is being contributed by, uh, being developed and contributed by Toyota. And they're very active in the project. So this is a slightly newer version of the slide that Dan showed. I think the key, the key thing, and again, if you're really, really paying attention, you would notice this. Uh, we, don't, we no longer really support the web app stuff, we, but we do have a lot of support for kooksa.val. Um, and that, I'll, I'll talk about kooksa.val in, in a minute or two when I talk about our connectivity solution. Oh. Oh, some of these are on a timer because I stole them from another deck. So. <laughs> Um, in terms of device profiles, we have a number, you, you can build basically all from the same source tree. Uh, you can build multiple different instrument cluster configurations, um, including bare metal Linux, uh, container versions, and ver in hypervisor versions, virtual machine based versions. Uh, the IVI expert group has brought embedded Flutter into the vehicle, but we've also got, still have Qt uh, applications that we, that we developed a long time ago and have recently been ported over to Qt 6, um, again, using their open source license. 
Everything we do on AGL uh, is and continues to be completely open source. So everything I talk about today, I'll have links later in the presentation. <clears throat> everything I talk about today, you can freely go to our, our wiki page or our download page and you can download everything, you can play with the apps. If you go down to our um, demonstrations in the, uh, in the showcase later today, all the, almost all of the stuff you're seeing there can be downloaded and, and, and played with today. So um, you're welcome to do that on a variety of different boards. And one of the major things that we added this year, we're, we're not showing it here because we didn't ship all the equipment uh, here to Japan, but we added this in what we call embedded gateway demo. Um, so in, a, in the vehicle, especially what you see today, if you're familiar with any kind of telematics systems, like uh, in the US there'd be, say, OnStar or Hyundai, okay, it's doing it again, Hyundai Blue Link. Um, <clears throat> these are what they call telematics systems or, gate, or telematics gateways. And what we now have is a demo where we're aggregating uh, data coming in from multiple CAN buses. In the particular case of our embedded world demo, we had a steering wheel that was connected to CAN, and we had uh, what we call our demo control panel, which simulates an ECU that's connected to CAN. And that was all those dual CAN buses, and it could be any number of CAN buses really, but that was what we had available in the hardware. Those two CAN buses are connected to the reference hardware, and that gateway is then aggregating that data. And you can send that data to either, well, to both uh, the AGL reference hardware. And again, this could be CAN too, but we just ran out of physical hardware, so we used Ethernet. Um, so basically connecting that to a separate board via Ethernet or CAN, ideally, um, which was running a KVM-based system where we're running our, a Flutter instrument cluster and a Flutter IVI system. <coughs> And then that same reference, that same gateway is also sending MQTT data, you know, from the vehicle in real time up to the AWS cloud. So we're not showing this system exactly that here this week, but um, this is something you can build, um, and you can see videos of it. I think in our, our link to from our webpage uh, from Embedded World. So this is the. Uh, AGL Aquarium. We've done two releases a year, very consistent with this. We do tend to do one in the first quarter of the year and one uh, in the summer. And we started with uh, Agile Albacore back in January of, tw of uh, 2016. And uh, our most, well, our second most recent release was Quirky Quill back in, uh, in uh, the springtime, back in February. Well, wintertime still. So, <clears throat> That has now become our new long-term support version. Um, and I'll explain why we're doing it as a long-term support version in a second. So we released this on February, at the end of February. We participated in CES at the beginning of the year. And uh, basically all of our code from CES was included in this release. Um, we, the, we, have a, we had a new AGL uh, UI that was created by a company called ICS. Uh, it was based on Flutter. Um, it's a, basically, we're showing that demo, we're showing that Flutter-based IVI system downstairs, and there have been some improvements to it since the CES that are that again are all still avail are all available. Um, the cool thing about Flutter is we basically gave ICS a clean sheet of paper about a year ago, and said, hey, "Go create something new and cool for our IVI system," and. They basically, with their, their designers, came up with something. Their developers wrote some code to convert that from uh, Figma to Flutter. And working with Scott and Jan Simon and Marius, they, they basically put all that together. And we had that up and running in Asheville, at, you know, in my hometown, in about eight weeks. Um, so Scott and Jan Simon and a guy from ICS came to town. and. Uh, we, we had that all running. It was pretty, it's pretty good. You can be very productive with this, with, with Flutter, and you can get something up and running that's very, very interesting. So we're going to continue, because of, because of the way the Octo project is working, we're going to continue supporting Quirky Quillback, similar to what we did for Lucky Lamprey, if you're familiar with our version 12 of AGL, which was our previous long-term support version. We supported that throughout the life cycle of uh, the Dunfell Yocto release. 
And basically, we'll continue supporting Quirky Quillback as long as the older LTS, which is called uh, Kirkstone or version 4.0 of Yocto, continues to be supported. Uh, you can see, I'll, I have a slide that kind of details this in a second, but we, we basically try to get our releases out. There's about a six week cycle for Yocto releases and we try to do our release just a few weeks after Yocto sends out theirs. And then <clears throat> in July, uh, we released AGL UCB 18 or Royal Rice Fish. And you can see he wears the crown. He's the king, the king of, of releases. So we, what we did was we upgraded to Yocto 5.0, which is their new LTS, which was released in May, or April rather. And uh, we, had to, we basically did a lot of BSP updates. Um, we updated Flutter to use a, different, a newer version of the Flutter and better. Um, we did a lot of connectivity updates uh, for Kuxa.val to get that up to the latest uh, 0.4.5. 0 0.4, yeah, and that's, so that's basically what we use for connectivity. It's another open source project that makes use of the vehicle signal specification from Covisa. And um, Scott Murray, who's here, and he'll be giving a presentation a little bit about, um, a little bit about what they did on the gateway stuff uh, later tomorrow. Um, he basically did a lot of the connectivity work to keep that upgraded. And then we added new BSPs like the Raspberry Pi 5, as well as upgrading a lot of the other BSPs. So uh, the plan is to continue RiceFish patch releases uh, through at least the beginning of next year until we get to our, our next release past RiceFish, um, which is going to be called Super Salmon. Um, so for Salmon, we, we plan to continue with uh, the Yachter Project's Garth Gap updates. So again, they're updating about every, every six weeks, eight weeks. Uh, I have some details on this later, but we'll be continue, continuing with uh, Flutter upgrades. Uh, Panasonic has a presentation tomorrow about the Unified, is it today or tomorrow? About Unified HMI today? Today, about Unified HMI and all the great work they've been doing with that. So they're, they've pushed some more updates to Garrett recently. Um, we've got software, we've got SDV expert group, ex, expert group updates. So again, I've got some, some pointers to some more uh, information from uh, Michelle and from Jerry Zhao later, later today. Um, we have an app store proof of concept that has been started by Toyota and I've got some more details about that. And then every year for the last, I don't know how many years, it's been, it's been quite a few, uh, we have participated in Google Summer of Code. Um, and this year we had two students. Um, the demo control panel, which was kind of my dream for many years for being able to control uh, CAN data or any kind of input data going into the vehicle uh, without having to use scripts, but showing something you could do you know, graphically. That was developed by a GSOC student last year. Um, Scott did some updates, uh, ICS did some updates to it. That same GSOC student, Sujintan, he returned again this year and did some more improvements to the demo control panel. So those demo control panel updates will be available with Salmon. Um, and then we had another GSOC student uh, basically uh, integrate Whisper AI and uh, a new voice controlled uh, AI, voice controlled user interface that uses Whisper AI. And I think we're showing that downstairs? Yes, it's just very noisy downstairs. Yeah, it's a little noisy, but maybe we could, maybe we could bring down the cone of silence. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so here's our schedule for Salmon. We're planning to have our M1, our Milestone 1 release at the end of uh, November. And we usually plan this around CES, uh, which is kind of what these dates were based on. We're, we're not going to be attending CES this year, but the final release is planned for uh, mid-February mid so that we can basically get that release done right after FOSDEM because we will be participating in, in FOSDEM again. <clears throat> and then we'll continue with the salmon patch releases through, through next year. Uh, so, AGL and the Yocto LTS. So, the first, 
Yocto LTS was Dunfell, uh, which was 3. Dot, I don't remember now, 3.4. Anyway, Dunfell, we tracked that with Lucky Lamprey. Uh, that went end of life in April of this year. So we did uh, 27, I think it was, Lucky Lamprey releases uh, tracking the Yocto Project's releases. By far the most we've done in any of our major releases. Uh, Kirkstone will continue for another two years through April of 2026. So anytime there's a Kirkstone update, uh, version 4.0.x, we will do a, um, an update to Lucky, no, to Quirky Quillback. And the new Yocto LTS.5.0, LTS 5.0, which is Scarth Gap, was released in April. And our next set of major releases will continue to track Scarth Gap. So, like it says here, Quillback 17.0.x, actually we've upgraded it, we, we upped the, the, the point to uh, point 0.1. Uh, we'll get Kirkstone updates until it goes end of life in 2026. So, <clears throat> I've already talked about most of these points, but I'm gonna, I'll upload these presentations. So Scott gave uh, an excellent presentation at uh, ELC Europe um, in September and I have a link to the YouTube presentation. Uh, this link will actually skip the boring parts, which is my part, and get you right to Scott's part of the presentation. And he'll tell you all about how we did the upgrade and the transition to, uh, to the Octo Project, uh, Scarth Gap. It's, it was a pretty interesting process. And then what we do is we have a next branch, so we have our, our master and we have our next, and the next branch we've already started, so basically we're trying to keep up with the latest on the Yocto project for the two, next two years while they march forward until their next LTS. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're a little lazy, you know, about starting next, but we were kind of forced to start it early this time due to some breakage upstream, um, but, uh, so we're, we've got the next branch already up and running, and if you watch his presentation, he'll talk more, a little bit more about what we did on, on the next branch over the last few years to keep up with uh, Yocto. So I know you're all excited. You want to get involved? How can you help? Good question. So uh, AGL, we're code first, upstream first. So. We're tr as much as possible, we're trying to use our upstream partners, uh, upstream projects, uh, to basically maintain the code as much as possible. And we do, but we do invest in software components, automotive software components that are not available anywhere else. Um, we're continuing evaluating open source technologies, looking for the best in class solutions. So for, for automotive use, and we are. We've invested in cases where, there have been cases where we've gone down a path, say with audio or with our application framework, where the uh, other projects in the world improved greatly while we were working on this and we decided to change tracks. And so, and we've provided developers and upstream code in those cases where we identified some automotive use cases where there were gaps. And especially in uh, open source projects like Pipewire and Wire Plumber, uh, Yocto, Lava, and, and others. And as always, we're willing to collaborate with anyone who brings code. So um, I think we're a pretty friendly group um, we're pretty, you know, we're always willing to help somebody get their code up and running in AGL, help them upstream it to us, or even just getting it running for their, on their own board or whatever. So um, we do have a lot of ways you can participate, and I'll, I'll get into that in a, in a second. We have a weekly developer call, for example, that you can, you can join. We also have um, 10 active expert groups. Um, this is basically a, a screen grab of our Confluence page. Uh, all the expert, we have basically, all the expert groups are now on our Confluence page. We're trying as much as possible to migrate our content from our uh, media wiki over to Confluence. Um, we recently, the Linux Foundation migrated to a, from, a, from our own instance, our own managed instance of Confluence and Jira over to a, a Atlassian managed in, instance. Um, 
we're, we have some issues with that, and if you do, if you do have an issue where you're trying to get into our JIRA or our Confluence, feel free to, to email myself or Jan Simon. Uh, we just, re just even the other day, we discovered that some of the content that we thought was public was marked as private, and so people couldn't see it. It's, that was with the OSPO expert group that we just formed. Um, so there are the old links to any JIRA or Confluence should. Uh, automatically redirect to the new instance. Sometimes they don't, I have found. Um, so we, do, we have found a few issues with that, but we're working on, we're working on fixing it all the time. Um, so open source program office expert group. So when Dan's first slide, it said open source program office, Greg KH turned to me and said, isn't that you? I said, no, 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 it's an expert group. <laughs> So the uh, LF has numerous resources for open source project uh, offices, um, you know, the Togo Foundation and others. But again, automotive has had many difficulties over the years in getting these very conservative automo automobile companies and tier ones to uh, have a process for contributing to open source. When I was at Continental, and this was, goes back to 2008, I formed what, would, what would, we would now call the first OSPO at Continental. And you know, it's, it was really hard to get our customer and customers who we were gonna sell this open source project code to and our own internal team and our legal team all kind of focused on the, in the right direction on, on uh, open source. And it was, it was a lot of work. Um, so there's a lot of companies that have done this right in the automotive world. There's a lot of companies who want to learn how to do it right. So uh, Toyota has agreed to form this automotive, this OSPO expert group. Um, we're going to be kicking it off uh, November 12th. There'll be bi-weekly meetings. Um, we have a panel discussion today at two o'clock being led by uh, Endosan from Toyota. Endosan is the Endosan and Itosan from Toyota are the two leaders of the OSPO expert group. And um, then Mary Wang from Volvo will be having a, uh, a, a, a presentation tomorrow at noon to talk about Volvo's OSPO journey. So we want to really make this open source um, contribution process less scary for our automotive partners. Um, and we, there are some automotive companies that are really doing this right and can, can, are willing to help their, their, their competitors uh, work through this because it really it benefits everybody. Uh, IVI expert group. So they meet every Thursday. Um, and we've been alternating times to a, every other week. We have, we're at a Japan friendly time. Uh, which is a not that friendly East Coast time for me in the U.S., but uh, it's so it ends up being Friday mornings at 9 a.m. in Japan. Um, the problem is we haven't had a lot of Japanese participants in this call. Sometimes it's just me and Scott and Joel from Toyota. We're all in the U.S. talking to each other. So um, if you are interested in IVI, and if you're especially interested in Flutter and the Flutter and Better and some of the topics I'm going to talk about in the next miss, next couple slides, this is where you want to participate. If we don't start seeing some more Japanese participation, we're probably not going to run it at this Japan-friendly time anymore um, because we do get more participation in the uh, regular time slot or the European and U.S. friendly time slot. This is an eye chart, um, <laughs> but I basically, this is, these were all of the updates that we included in 18.0 in, in uh, Quirky Quillback. Um, there was a, a, a very large update that Toyota did and, and provided to us. However, um, they didn't, actually they didn't even include everything. I seem to have lost the slide because I'm working on was working on three different decks. But they, even since then, and for 18.0.1, they did another update and they upgraded the, uh, they upgraded uh, Flutter to a new SDK and did a lot of other new features in, uh, in, in the Flutter and Better that they provided to us. And then Joel just gave us kind of a, uh, a brain dump of what they're working on and I tried to concisely 
uh, create something concise out of, out of that. So basically for Salmon, he's looking at a new dark command line tool uh, to work with the IVI home screen uh, to improve, uh, works, basically to replace the workspace automation. Uh, he's already got a Git repository uh, set up and an initial release that's planned for mid-November. Um, and the idea is that Toyota and Woven will be using this tool that they're going to be releasing in real time to the world um, and to, to improve their workspace, to, their, to improve their workflow. Um, they've got a number of IVI home screen updates. Uh, there's a session manager. Uh, there's a lot more detail on this on our wiki that I need to transfer over to the Confluence page. I'll do that as soon as as soon as I get to it, probably later today. Um, and then we have an App Store proof of concept. Um, and this is kind of the rundown of features. We're looking at using Flatpak with bubble wrap, um, a catalog browser, an app launcher for the, for the App Store. Again, we're looking for people to participate. So far, it's really just been Toyota driving the requirements. And we're trying to create a generic app store that doesn't need to make use of uh, any of the commercial app stores that are out there so that everybody's working from kind of a common interface and a common way to, to work with their app stores in automotive. But it, it could be for any use case, really. Um, 11.42. So, okay, I got 10 minutes, I think. Um, app, app Framework and Connectivity Expert Group. So the new VSS 5.0 was, was released by, the, by Covisa. Um, Kuxa 2.0, which again, is that's the, that's the implementation that uses VSS. Um, they're nearly complete upstream and we're hoping to get that into Salmon. Um, and Scott Murray has a, a presentation on VSS usage in that gateway demo that he'll be making tomorrow at uh, 2.50. So be sure to attend that. Uh, Software Defined Vehicle Expert Group. Um, <clears throat> they're doing a lot of different work. Um, I didn't want to really uh, rehash what Jerry's going to be talking about in the next topics, but just know that Jerry Zhao will be providing an update in the next session, and then there's other sessions with other, with other topics within SDV uh, that I'm sure Jerry will point you to. For example, our unified HMI and the uh, virtual open systems work with VertIO. There's presentations on all of that coming up. Instrument cluster update, so the latest work on the instrument, uh, they're not giving a presentation this time, uh, but the latest work on the instrument cluster demo can be seen at the AGL booth in the Showcase Expo. You can talk to uh, Dr. Yamaguchi, Yamaguchi-san, about uh, what he's been doing uh, with audio and with getting, it, with getting the demo up and running with the Qt6 and other topics. Jan Simon has a discussion, a session later today to, to, to take a look at AWS deployment on AGL. So, <clears throat> so if you, collaboration opportunities. So we have our Confluence page. That's the, the home page is what I showed you earlier. There's links to there. There's links to all the past talks that we've given at various all-member meetings at ALSs. I try to keep that up to date so that you can go to the page, you can get a link to the video, you can get a link to the slides. Uh, it should be one-stop shopping instead of having to go look look around for a bunch of things. Um, the Software Defined Vehicle Expert Group meets every other Tuesday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that works out to uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Japan time. Um, we have a weekly developer call. Anybody can call in, uh, ask if you have a question, if you're having a problem with AGL, if you need to know how to do something, how to find something. We, us we can usually try to get you uh, some help. Um, and we also go over the current status and what's going on with our releases in the short term and things like that. We've got a mail list. We now have a Discord server. Who here uses Discord? All right, so you can now, if you have a question, you can go to Discord and you can um, ask your question on Discord. We're still on IRC, but I think a lot of our 
chat that used to go on on IRC has now moved over to Discord. Um, so again, our wiki page with the latest schedule and release notes. We do have a documentation site. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Not a question, but one thing that you that Joel mentioned that he's working on that's coming with the embedder is uh, the filament 3D. Go ahead. Anyway. Yeah, sorry, just one. Uh, when Joel has been telling us about the, the future work for the uh, Flutter and Better, uh, Toyota has been investing quite a bit into uh, the filament 3D engine support. That's uh, upstream work that Google's been doing. Uh, and so it looks like Toyota is pretty keen on that because it uh, basically saves them from having to buy another 3D engine for you know rendering stuff in the IVI. <laughs> And that works coming soon in the next like Flutter and Better release. Uh, and if you join Joel's Discord, he has some demo, like YouTube video links and stuff that he's posted there. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, like 3D modeling in the infotainment space, that's something that's coming. Yeah, I probably should have provided a link to. There's a Flutter and Better Discord uh, server as well <clears throat> that AGL is pretty active on. Any other questions? All right then, uh, thank you very much for attending and have a great rest of the conference. All right. <laughs>